Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to You Studio and today I'm sharing with you a 12 by 12 paper painted canvas that I made for a charity auction that is November 4th in um, Palmdale, California. The charity is close to my heart because it was started by a friend of the family whose daughter passed away from cancer and the thing that she was really passionate about um, as she was being treated when she was around 15 and 16 years old is therapy dogs. They would come to visit her at the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles as she was getting treatment. And she said whenever she heard those clicking of the little nails on the floor, she got so excited because they, the dogs made her feel so much better. So this, this auction that I'm making this piece for is to support the training and upkeep and scheduling and you know all whatever is involved in um, these therapy dogs visiting the children's hospital and also um, elderly homes and things like that to uh, cheer up patients and people who might be you know getting treatment or being sick or whatever and I really I want to support this I think it's a great idea I think that therapy dogs are amazing they do require training and um, the ones that, that they use for this particular foundation are well trained. You know, they have to have the right disposition. They have to be able to handle being touched and pulled, pulled on and cuddled and whatever, you know, and um, they have to have a good disposition and, and be trained to take all of that. So. Of course, because this this uh, cherry auction, which is called Tea for Titania, um, it's it's a high tea. There's tea, there's tea cakes, there's scones, there's uh, macarons, um, there's harp music, and then there's about seventy five items to have in an auction. And if you go and write down how much you're willing to pay, and then someone else might write down, you know something else that's higher than yours and you go back and forth it's not it's not one of those loud auctions that that everyone is yelling or whatever or you know five give me ten give me ten can i you know that type of thing it's not that it's it's like it's all done very quietly and then at the end of the event um you find out you know whether you you got the item or not so all the items are donated and that's uh, how they raise the money for the year to support this foundation. The the mascot of the 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 fund, the T for Titania fund that is running this event, it was drawn by my my teenage friend who passed away. She was an artist, and she did some oil paintings. One of them, which is hanging in in Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Um, she, she was talented and she would have continued to get more and more skillful had she been able to survive her cancer. So that also speaks to me because I'm an artist and, and I don't know, there's just kind of a connection there. So to start out this piece, you might have wondered what crazy thing I was doing at the very beginning. On my gel plate, it sometimes gets very dirty and crusty and there's lots of layers of paint. And a fun way to take some of that off is to use packing tape. And, you know, clear packing tape like you put on a package. So I did that and I made several strips of packing tape with interesting, fun colors. And you know, you know, you know what you're gonna get because it's layers and layers of paint that have gotten on there over multiple printings. And I use those to start out my background. Uh, the, the photo that this piece is inspired by is by Taduce Lakota on unsplash.com, which is a place that you can go and find beautiful photos to inspire your art that don't have any copyright restrictions. They're there for you to use without fussing. They do ask that you give them credit if you can. And so of course I'm giving him credit for his gorgeous photo of what I think is a border collie. Um, it could be an Australian Shepherd. Not sure, I'm not that good with dog names, but I think it's a border collie and that's the reason that I named the piece 
autumn collie because the dog is out in the woods in the autumn, you can tell. And it's uh, the light on the photo is beautiful and the dog is beautiful. And because this, this charity is all about dogs and therapy dogs, training and upkeep of therapy dogs, I wanted, of course, make my art to be representative of some sort of a dog. And so I found this photo that I really liked and it is inspiring me. And in the background, there was trees, uh, far in the background, kind of hazy. And so I was, I was inspired to put those strips up and down of paint and give myself a really colorful and interesting kind of vertical background. And then of course I put some of the trees on um, with some different papers and also of course filled in the rest of it with, with kind of vertical, vertical strips of different papers. And all the stuff that I used with the exception of the, uh, the tape strips are um, gel printed stuff, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the ones that I intended to make. Some of this, as, I, as you'll see this process that I'm starting right now, some of it was very intentional, but so a lot of the pieces that I used on this were the scraps, the leftovers, the cleanups, the roll-offs, you know, stuff like that, that um, maybe you didn't intend to get, but you ended up with lots of nice crusty bits that you just loved that weren't even like the thing that you intended to make. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like... Some of the stuff that I get when I'm gel printing was completely unintentional. That happens quite a bit for me. So I wanted to make some furry paper. And of course I got my gel plate out for that. And I have these tools that are, um, they've got silicone tips and there's a lot of different tips on them. And I, I rolled very sloppily some different colors of paints, acrylic paints onto this six by six plate. And I didn't make them all smooth. I kind of smushed them around and it's a pretty heavy, thick layer of paint. Plus I spritzed it sli slightly with some water too, to keep it wet. And then I'm going through with my little tool and I'm, I'm making a texture on there that looks like fur. And the inspiration for this, believe it or not, lately I've been obsessed with watching cake decorating videos and shows. It's a thing. I don't know. I've just been really wanting to watch that. It's not that I'm making any of these because I'm not. I haven't made a single cake, but I just like to watch the process. And one of the things that I saw was these people making a teddy bear cake, a big teddy bear cake, like four feet tall on one of the shows that I watch on the Food Network, I think. It's probably ridiculous cakes, maybe. I don't know. But, um, they had a texture plate that that they pressed the fondant into to make the fur of the bear. And I saw the texture plate and I thought, that's what I need. I need that texture plate and then I can use it on my jelly plate to make texture, I thought to myself. And then I looked to the darn thing up. It was 30 bucks. 30 bucks for a plate, a silicone thing. I said, no. So then I said to myself, okay. I'm gonna carve one because you know, I have some some carving material and some tools and I could carve something like that, you know, basically a stamp, a rubber stamp or a texture plate that I could use for the same idea, but I was just too lazy. That would have taken me too long. And so I just decided to draw it right onto my gel plate. And this worked out great. This, this worked out perfectly. It got me the papers that I wanted. Um, the, the paper that I'm using is deli paper, which is what you use to wrap sandwiches in in a deli, which is why it's called that. It's an, an unwaxed type of a heavier than tissue, more durable than tissue paper, because tissue paper, if you put it on a gel plate, it gets wet and it tears a lot of the time. So that doesn't work, but this deli paper really does. But are these pieces pristine, nice deli papers? No. They're the ones that I use underneath my projects on my videos. And they get a little bit of stuff on them. They might have some ink or some some splatter or whatever leftover paint on them. But I don't throw them away. I reuse them by um, gel printing on them because when you do that, you're just covering all whatever is on there up with a layer of paint anyway. So I made several six by six 
pieces in different colors, um, darker ones, lighter ones, really light ones, all with this fur texture on them to paper paint my little dog. And I drew him on a piece of deli paper. This was a clean one. <laughs> um, I drew it with pencil, adjusted it with the eraser a lot, and then I drew in the lines that I felt comfortable with with a black permanent marker. This is an India ink pen, uh, fabric Castell pit pen, so that I can see the lines really well. And then I am tearing paper, little bits of paper, big pieces of paper, smaller pieces of paper. I start out with some fairly large ones, but most of it is done with really, really tiny pieces of torn paper. And I have these, these little plastic uh, pallet bowls next to me to throw the teeny tiny pieces in because I know I'm going to need those to fill in and I don't want to drop them on the floor. <laughs> they would never be retrieved. My floor is such a mess because <laughs> everything keeps dropping onto it. So that's why those little bowls are over there to kind of collect different pieces of paper. This canvas took me about eight hours hours maybe even longer than that to complete so there are large sections cut out and a lot of uh, speeding up the average speed that I do my voiceover videos is four times fast and a lot of this is sped up to eight times fast if it's too fast for you you can go below the video and you can um, slow it down to half the speed that that is possible for you to do as someone who's watching but just keep in mind that my voice will also be slowed so you probably want to turn the sound off if you're gonna watch it at a slower speed there's just I there's no way I could fit this into a 20 minute video and I barely got it into a 30 minute video so the other thing you can do if you if you get bored is you can you can push the little bar forward and um, go to go to a later section if 30 minutes is is too much for you you know, I don't know. I don't know how to. I like sped up videos myself. I like. Uh, I like to get to the point. You know, I want to. I want to see the techniques, but I want to get to the point. I don't want to watch a lot of repetition. Um, so that's the type of videos that I tend to make myself. But I know some people like real live videos. They want to watch it in real time. Um, and I don't make that kind on this channel. I do a live stream with Peg Robinson over on another channel every week, but. Um, on this channel, I make the type of videos that I prefer to watch, which is sped up videos. And that's, that's probably because I already kind of know what I'm doing. If you're new, you might want more instruction. And in some, of my in some of my videos, I do give a lot of instruction. But as you can see, I'm, I do have a printout of the photo. It's, I lightened it up a whole bunch. The photo was a lot darker, um, the one on Unsplash. If you go and look at it with the link below the video, you'll see it's a lot darker. But I wanted to be able to see the features of the, the dog's face because in order to get it to look like a specific animal, you really got to get the face right and the expression. And that's the tricky part. <laughs> that's always the tricky part. And of course, my dog didn't come out exactly the same as the one in the photo. You can kind of tell that the scene is the same, but I'm not sure that the dog looks the same. But the coloring... I tried to get pretty accurate and I tried to get the eye spacing and shape pretty accurate. Hopefully I did an, uh, a decent enough job. So you might ask, why am I doing this not directly onto the canvas, but onto a piece of separate paper? I find this so much easier to do on separate paper and then trim it out and put it on to the canvas, you know, over the top. Um, than to do it right directly onto the canvas. The old style way that I used to do paper painting when I first started trying to do it a long time ago, maybe, I've probably been doing it for maybe three years or something. Um, I did an underpainting on a canvas and then I paper painted over the top of that. So that was how I kept my everything organized, where the color should be, where the line should be. But this method, which I haven't seen anyone else doing, so it's probably only me doing this. Um, this is easier for me to do. I think maybe because the background is white, the lines are dark, I can 
then I can also like adjust. I don't have to on the edges of the piece of the drawing. I don't have to keep it right to the line, which when you're tearing paper is a little bit tricky. <laughs> you tear something, you're not sure exactly what you're going to get. So sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. So I have uh, some dark papers, some medium papers, some grays, some kind of brownish colors, some kind of skin tone colors, some white, um, some yellowish ochre colors. You know, there's, I made a lot of different papers, enough to do a whole nother dog or two probably. I could probably do this whole thing again uh, with the papers I have left. <laughs> That's how many I made, but you never know how much you're going to need. So, and also you don't want to just be going with black and white, even though you look at the dog, you say, that's a black and white dog. We all know that's a black and white dog, but black and white isn't reality. It's, it's not at all reality. Even black has so many different shades of brown and gray and, you know, everything in it. Same thing with white. White has more grays and, and tans in it than it does actual white. So you got to have variety of what you're doing. And I'm tearing the pieces into mostly skinny strips and then um, kind of layering from the bottom and moving up. Because if you start with the ones at the top and then you go to layer the next layer, you can't get them tucked under. And you know how fur it lays over itself. So... I am contemplating that as I'm doing this. Um, it may not seem like I'm doing that, but trying to start at the bottom and work my way up in sections of color. That dog had a very white uh, area and then the underneath of its belly is all, you can tell it's all got a white underneath belly. And so the only difference that I see between this and an Australian Shepherd is that they all seem to have a white strip down their nose, kind of their forwards and the tops of their noses were white. And this dog has a completely black face with highlights, but definitely a black face. So that's why I thought maybe it was a Border Collie. Maybe someone else will be able to recognize this dog, this dog type, but I think it's a Border Collie. So... <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Border Collie. In the Autumn Forest. So, it does have a little uh, cute kind of tarnished brass or copper. You can tell it's a bone tag around its neck, but you can't see it except for half of it. So, I did put that on as well. Cute dog. Beautiful scene. Beautiful, beautiful photograph. Really liked it. When I was trying to decide what, I knew I wanted to make a dog. I just couldn't, I wasn't sure what dog. I just looked through a lot of photos trying to, because I don't, I don't actually have a dog. I'm allergic. So, um, my mom's dog was here for a while and he lived in the backyard because he couldn't be in the house because we have too much allergies in here. And he was a long haired dash hound, adorable dog adorable but he did pass away not that long ago of cancer which was sad <laughs> so I could have made a dash hound I thought about making a dash hound but then that would just seemed it seemed too hard right now to do a dash hound so I decided to try to find another kind of dog that I liked and this was what I liked if I could have a dog if I wasn't allergic what would I have probably a Portuguese water dog they are so fluffy and cute and bouncy and soft they're very very soft they have like this curly brown hair that's probably what I would have um, a friend of ours got one and it's just, it's just such a cute dog I also think maybe our neighbor's dog that looks over the He's very tall and he looks over the fence at us. Might be a Portuguese water dog or something like that. So I ended up cutting the face and the body separate of each other and put, going ahead and placing the body and then doing the head as a separate piece. I also drew the eyes on another piece of paper because I'm going to do them separately. Um, 
and then paste them in over the holes that are left. <laughs> I did that last. That's like a really important part of an expression is to get the eyes. And I worked on them a lot. Um, there's probably not a lot of me fussing with those eyes on this video because I probably cut a lot of it out, but I spent a lot of time working on the eyes, trying to get them the right shape, the right tilt, the right highlights, it's uh, the right width apart. That makes a huge difference on the expression. And I think that the expression of my paper painted dog is pretty pretty good. He looks very gentle and sweet and um, he or she, I don't know. I'm going to call it a he. Also the nose. The nose took me a long time to, to get the highlights and shadows the way I wanted them because because the dog's face is black. It's, you know, you got to work a lot on getting all those little pieces in there that'll put the highlights in the right spot and get the lower lip and everything correct. He had like a little white part on it below his lower lip, like a little white uh, soul patch or something <laughs> that needed to be on there correctly. And just have to mess with it. You tear the papers, you put them on, you put some more papers on top of that until you're happy with um, being able to see everything that you want to see. The same thing happened with the, with the ear. You want, you want to be able to see the fold of the ear, but the ear is black. And so it's hard to get that definition between where the fold is coming over and when, where the shadow would be when the entire thing is black. It's just, it's just something you have to work on. So that's why paper painting takes so long. It takes longer than just some acrylic painting or, you know, even acrylic painting takes a long time and oil painting takes a really long time because it takes so long to dry. But it also has really amazing blending, you know, that you can't really get as much with acrylic. You can get some pretty good blending, but boy, oil, oil painting has a lot of amazing blends. But I have no patience for it. It takes way too long to dry. Way too long. Can't take it. <laughs> if I can't get a project done in one day, even if it's a very long day, then I can't do it. I need to, um, I just don't have the patience to, to take, you know, a week of layers and drawing in between to do something. I just don't have the patience. That's my own, you know, failing. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, I'm going to leave links in the box below the video and if you would like to attend the tea on November 4th this year, there will be a link to where you can buy tickets. Of course, you need to, to uh, do it very, you know, they go on sale on September 1st and you will need to get in there and get your tickets fairly quickly because they won't last a long, long time. It's, I don't know how many people, but um, it's like round tables of 10 people, probably, I don't know, 15. 15, so probably 150 seats maybe at the event. And they have a bell choir and um, harps and they have a live artist doing pastels. And they have lots of really yummy food. You need to wear tea attire. And if you don't have a hat, you can borrow one. They have a hat booth of donated hats for people to wear um, for tea. Last year I wore a fascinator and lace gloves <laughs> with my dress. <laughs> okay, so his head and face are, are in pretty good shape. I'm going to go ahead and glue that onto the canvas. Um, one step that I've probably forgot to mention to you guys is that I did do a, a light wash over the background. You'll notice it's not as bright as it was when I first glued everything down to just kind of calm it down. There's some real bright light in the background um, in the picture. And so I did a, uh, well, basically it was a glaze. I mixed titanium white and um, 
glazing, satin glazing liquid and put it over the whole background with the exception of the trees to get, you know, to fade it out a little bit and make it all more uniform because I wanted, obviously, the dog to stand out from the background. So here I am working on the eyes. Um, I ended up painting painting them with some acrylic paint in the same types of colors that I used uh, for the fur and everything. But um, then I put them on and I add more papers around them. So you can't really tell, you know, that's not just like a cutout thing that's slapped on there. There's, it's all layered in. I just wanted to get the, the shadows and highlights in the actual eyeballs as good as I could without um, trying to paint them on the canvas. And this, I, I, I fussed with this for a long time. I really did. <laughs> it's said that you can see the soul through the eyes. And I think with, with a dog's eyes, you really can. You know, they look at you with that look and you're just like, oh, you cute, sweet little thing. <laughs> Want to try to get something, something going on my, my canvas that looks like that. So if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment or question. Check out the links below the video. Um, Subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bells so that you will know when a fresh video comes up for you to watch. I know you guys are getting pretty good at doing all that stuff and you're probably getting pretty tired of me saying it, but there might be someone here who hasn't been to my channel before who might need to hear that stuff. All those, all those things help my channel grow and help other people who might be interested in my content find my channel. You really help me out when you do all those things. And you help anyone who's, whose channel you watch. So you should do that with all, the, all your favorite channels. Make sure you leave thumbs ups and comments and, and you know, subscribe and share and um, help out their channels too. That's how we get found. So here I am adding more papers um, around the eyes getting some more shadows in there and highlights and things after I've put the the painted ones on, which I tore out. You should always tear the papers because cut papers leave little lines that you don't like. So to finish out the paper painting, I'm going to do a little bit of work on the background. And there is this very shiny light that almost gives the dog like kind of a halo at the top part of his head. So I'm using some acrylic ink from my Posca pen with a water brush to kind of really lighten up that area right on that, uh, it would be his left side of his face and ear. And then I'm going to use some artist pit pins, which are an acrylic paint pen. And since this project is all sealed with matte medium, I can use this pen, India ink. Did I say acrylic paint? I don't remember what I said, but it's India ink, so it dries permanently, but it just gives you like, you know, a few seconds that you can blend. So I'm adding a shadow around here and there and then blending it with my finger to just um, kind of define a few things that make parts seem easier to see. To make the uh, dog stand out from the background. And I don't consider this cheating. I'm a mixed media artist. If I said I was only a collage artist, no, even, even when I do a collage, I do this. I think it's perfectly fine to go back in and refine things and add shadows and highlights even after you've done your collage. In fact, I think it's necessary. I, I don't know... I don't think that me adding all this colored paper at the bottom even made it onto the video. I must not have filmed it, but I did add some leaves and sticks and things at the bottom of the video to fill out that kind of an autumn look. And of course, this is all Jill 
gel printed papers. All gel printed papers. Not all deli paper. Some of it is other lightweight papers like a printer paper, but a lot of it is deli paper. So then the last thing I do to this is I gave it about six coats of sealer, uh, spray sealer outside um, to make sure that it was all good and sealed in and and is UV protected and all that type of stuff. So yeah, that's it for my T for Titania auction doggy and I hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.